Welcome, and thank you for joining me for tips and tricks for analyzing your industrial IoT data in real time. My name is Jay Clifford, a developer advocate at Influx Data. In my past life, I helped to develop industrial IoT solutions for manufacturing partners. So these are my top tips and tricks that I learned along the way while working on these projects. So today we're gonna to learn three main things data collection, data storage, and data in action, and how we can use Influx tools to analyze data in these three main areas. So before we get stuck in, let's have a look at these milestones on a diagram, as we have to remember that each of these milestones are part of the data journey. So data collection is where we start off first. This is where we're collecting data from our PLC, from our sensors, either digital or analog, and this data is then shipped to our data storage engines. Now, for our purposes, it's all going to be in FluxDB. But you have to remember there are other data historians out there and there are other ERP systems that people utilize on a factory floor. Lastly, we have data in action. And that is how you use your data. So that could be anywhere from visualization to using it for alerts or even driving automated processes, such as turning machines on and off with your data. Some truly cool things that you can do with your data here. So let's get stuck in with data collection. And here's my first top tip. Treat Telegraph like a middleman. So, so what do I mean by this? Well, Telegraph is a great tool for collecting data from point A and sending it to point B. And that is what the majority of our community use it for. And there's no problems with that. But what I propose is actually enhancing your experience with Telegraph by using aggregator, aggregator and processor plugins. These aggregator and processor plugins allow us to enrich our data and allow us to derive new meaning from our data before we even reach the storage engine. So let's have a look at our diagram here. In one case, we have Telegraph directly pulling data and sending it to InfluxDB. That's direct. The second use case is middleman. So we have data being collected by Kepware, sending that to Telegraph and sending that to InfluxDB. And what we're going to do is look at three examples that we can do to enrich that data from Kepware and send that to InfluxDB. The first is a simple one, the enumeration plugin. So our machines go through different states in a day. In the real world, they'll go from off, on, running, and fault. But what we find within our machine payload is that a lot of the time this data is encoded. What we can do with the enumeration plugin is map human readable status codes to those enumerated values. So we can go from zero to off, one to on, two to running, and three to fault. This may seem simple, but it's extremely powerful to have these status codes and the real world values stored within our time series database so people can read and use them within other flux queries and visualizations later down in your data journey. The second one is aggregation. Now, a lot of the time we store directly our raw sensor data into InfluxDB and then we'll perform aggregations on that data. And that is absolutely fine. That is a perfect valid use case for using InfluxDB. But what about if we can take some of these mundane aggregations out with InfluxDB and perform them before they even reach the database? And we can do that using the basic stats plugin. Essentially what we do is we define a period of time that we wish to collect data for. So in this case, we've defined 30 seconds. We then decide if we want to keep the original data or drop it. In this case, we're going to keep that original data as well. And then we're going to choose what aggregations and selectors we perform on that collected data. So you can see from our list here, we have count, difference, max, mean. All of these can be performed on our raw data and derive new meaning and send that directly to InfluxDB after the fact. And this is a great way of saving resources for more powerful queries that we want to do in Flux. Lastly, and a more advanced use case, is the ExecD plugin. Now, this is where you're going to be getting your hands dirty. 
Essentially, what we can do with the ExecD plugin is offload our machine data into a third party application or script. This could go through a machine learning model or a forecasting application where we can derive some pretty advanced results on our data, which can help detect anomaly detection, predict new values, and we can send all of these directly to InfluxDB alongside our raw data. So moving on from here, these are three great examples that will elevate your experience working with data before it reaches InfluxDB and frees your processing power in InfluxDB up to do some really cool things we're gonna do in Flux in the next slide. So, We've passed our first milestone onto our second and basically the meat of what we're doing here, which is data at storage. And this is where we send our data to InfluxDB and what we can do to analyze that data while it's stored. So I'm a huge practitioner for Flux. You can do so much with Flux. And if you checked out Anais's talk, then you know what we're talking about. There is so much that can be achieved using learning the Flux language. So what I've decided to do is give you free examples of using Flux within the industrial IoT sector and basically the problems that they solve. So the first problem we're going to look at is calculating state duration. Now, calculating state duration is really important for our customers when they're looking to calculate OEE or operational equipment effectiveness. So Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to determine how long a machine's been in a certain state for, whether it's been running for a long time or whether it's been at fault for a long time. So let's take a quick look at the Flux code. First, we pull our data from our bucket machines. We take a 24-hour period of time. We're going to filter for our field state. And then we're going to use a function called event.duration. That's our secret source here. Essentially, what it's going to do is tell us how long a machine's been in a specific state in that field form using an hour duration. Next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to total those durations together to get the total amount of duration that that machine has been in that state over the course of that 24 hour period. After that, we're going to use a simple map function to calculate the percentage of time that machine has been in that specific status. So as you can see, our results is as follows. We have our fault at 15% and our machine is running at 85% efficiency. So these are great stats that you can use in your OEE calculations. The second one we're going to look at is deriving state. Deriving state is essentially the idea of if our machine doesn't give us a state within its payload, we can create one based on the sensor data that's provided to us. So let's consider our vibration data. If we know the expected vibration level of our machine when it's running, then we can use that as part of the calculation to tell us that our machine is in the running state. And if it deviates too far from this, then we know our machine is probably at fault. So let's have a quick look at the code again. Essentially, we're doing a lot of what we did before. We pull our data from the machines bucket. We're subscribing in this case to vibration. And we're also pulling data from vibration target, which is our destined vibration target for that sensor. We're then going to aggregate our data over our 12 hour period. So we're just going to calculate a mean and average for that vibration data. We're then going to pivot so we can perform some map calculations across columns. And then we're going to subtract the vibration actual from the vibration difference. And this will give us our vibration difference. We take that vibration difference and we basically use that as a threshold. If our data deviates too far from that threshold, we can assign a fault tag to that data, knowing that our machine has passed the point of no return and we need to look at fixing that machine. So that's using deriving state. And once we've derived state, we then can use our previous function to derive how long a machine has been in that state for. So you can see how these functions start to glue together with each other. Lastly, and one of the most advanced ones that you can do with Flux is comparing machine behavior. And this is when we look at anomaly detection or basic anomaly detection within Flux. Essentially what we're doing here is we're using median absolute deviation to detect when a machine is deterring from the pact. And what do, so what do I mean by when we deter from the pact? Well, supposedly we had three robot arms all doing the same job. 
they should be producing near the same amount of data and the same range of data. If one of our machines starts to fail unexpectedly, the vibration within that machine will start to fluctuate. We can use MAD to essentially detect when a number of anomalies within our vibration data occur. And we can then count those anomalies and provide those as a way of checking one of our machines is deviating from the pact and we need to go check that machine. So we've discussed three awesome flux crews that we can use to calculate and derive new meaning from our raw machine data. But let's take a step back and think about the overall architecture. So if you didn't know, we just released a new feature called Edge Data Replication, or EDR for short. This is an awesome new feature, which in simple terms allows you to assign a durable queue to one of your buckets. And anytime data enters your bucket, it's replicated to a remote bucket of your choosing. This could be InfluxDB Cloud, or it could actually be another local instance of InfluxDB. Think about that because that's a lot of ideas you can already think of how to use it. So let's take a look at this architecture here. We have Kepware driving our raw data into InfluxDB. We actually then use a Flux query to downsample that data into our Site A Analyze bucket. That Site A Analyze bucket has a durable queue attached to it, that EDR queue, and sends that data to InfluxDB Cloud. From there, we can perform much more complex calculations and more interesting visualizations on our data from a more global level. So think about that. We can chain together InfluxDB instances and spread the load of performance and what we do on our data at different chains within our product line. So we have reached our last milestone, data in action. And I thought there was no better way to show data in action without a demo. So, Taking our last diagram, here is our demo that we're going to be doing today. We're going to be collecting data from Kepware, storing that raw data within our InfluxDB Edge instance, replicating that data to InfluxDB Cloud, where we're going to be using some of the Flux queries that we used earlier to derive new meaning for our data. And then we're going to be offloading it to a visualization tool called Clarify. But more on that when we get to the demo. So let's swap over to the demo now. So let's start off within our Edge instance. And what do I mean by the Edge instance? Where I mean this is InfluxDB OSS running on, say, like an industrial gateway on your shop floor. And what we're doing is we're streaming raw sensor data from Kepware directly into InfluxDB. And we're deriving four fields from our data. We're deriving load, power, temperature, and vibration from our machine. So for this demo today, we're going to focus on vibration. So here's the raw data here. If I click Submit, you can see a pattern in our raw data. What we're also doing is we're using a downsample task to turn our irregular data into regular data. And you can see that here. If I jump into Downsampled Machines Vibration again, and I Submit, you can see the change in our data because we've aggregated over time and created regular data. What you won't see working behind the scenes here is we've also created a durable queue using EDR on this bucket, which means anytime the task offloads data from that raw data bucket into the downsample bucket, it's also sending that data into InfluxDB Cloud. So let's navigate to InfluxDB Cloud now. So as you can see, we're now in InfluxDB Cloud. And we have a bucket called Global and Global Analyzed. Global contains the data from our downsampled bucket. And Global Analyzed is our bucket that we're using to derive new meaning from our data. And what we mean by new meaning is some of those flux functions that we looked at earlier. So if we have a look at the Analyze Machine Data task, and if we jump into the edit task, you can see we're looking at doing some anomaly detection and also deriving status of our machines. And this is all focused around that vibration data. So if I jump back into the data explorer and I have a look at the field status and I click run, you can see that we're deriving status from these values. In this case, we're using it encoded, and that's really important for the third-party application that we're going to use to visualize that data. 
So I'm going to navigate to that now. And this is a third party tool called Clarify. So Clarify is a visualization tool for your time series data, but it's specifically designed for your industrial data. So imagine it a little bit like Grafana, but it's all set up to work for your industrial data. What I've done here is I've created what they call a timeline for our factory. And if I click on our factory A here, you can see a visualization of that data that we're deriving in InfluxDB. Here's our raw vibration data. As you can see, it's pretty similar for CNC1 and CNC2. That's because it's in the normal running state. And as you can see, we're deriving that running state all the way through. CNC3 looks a bit out of the norm, and you can see that from our vibration data here, which jumps up to almost 500. And from here, you can see we're actually deriving fault states for that data. So I can actually zoom in on that data here and take a better look at the states. So our machine can go from being running as normal to fault. So we really need to get an engineer out and have a look at that machine. As well as that, we can also look at our anomaly detection too. So we can visualize our anomaly detection for CNC1 and CNC3. As you can see, our, you know, our anomaly detection for CNC1 is pretty constant. And that's to be expected because there's not many faults happening with that device. What you can see for CNC3, however, is there are plenty of anomalies occurring because that CNC's vibration data is deviating away from the pact. So as you can see, we've experienced the full data journey of our machine data, from its collection in Kepware, to its transformation at the edge, and to the analytics that we've done using Flux on that data within InfluxDB Cloud. And then finally using a great tool like Clarify to visualize our machine data. This shows that InfluxDB works brilliantly within an ecosystem so you can truly get the value from your machine data. I'm really excited to see what you do with InfluxDB and your industrial data. Come find me and the rest of the DevRels in Slack and tell us what you're up to. We would love to hear about it. I really hope you enjoyed this session and I hope you enjoy the next one. Till next time.